doesn't have to be killed to prove it exists. Through the centuries, the mighty Columbia River separating Washington and Oregon has cut a deep gorge on its way to the Pacific Ocean. It is a big, rugged, beautiful land where man holds a deep respect for nature. In Stevenson, Washington, they passed an ordinance setting a $10,000 fine or five years in jail for killing a Bigfoot. The people living in this country have a special relationship to the woods. They depend on the land for their survival. They may not totally believe in Bigfoot, but they believe in the possibility. And they don't want it killed, at least not in their county. District Attorney Robert Leake. We didn't feel that if there was such an animal that the animal had ever harmed anybody or that it had done anything to deserve to be shot or captured. We need a piece of the body. Nothing else will be accepted. I think that there are many other ways of proving an existence of something other than killing that particular thing that you're trying to prove exists. My preference would be to locate a hunter who has shot and killed one, and perhaps because he thought he killed a valuable animal or a peculiar human, he might not have said anything about it. But if he would uh, come forward, um, perhaps we could examine the place where he killed it, and we might find a few bones, and then the whole thing is settled right there. If we don't find such an old kill, then the only alternative remaining is to kill one now. And uh, grisly as that sounds, uh, I think that is probably what we'll have to do. I would uh, uh, strongly urge the doctor to reconsider that, especially if he thinks he's going to do it in this county, because we would enforce the ordinance. Why add more controversy to something that's already controversial? Though what we have to have is, is a, a specimen for scientific identification. I think it would be morally wrong. I see no reason. In fact, I talked to a small boy, a schoolboy recently, and he said some people say shoot one to prove that they're there. And then he said supposing they won, that the one they shoot uh, is the last one. Well, my answer to that is uh, if they become extinct, uh, uh, so what? If they're not proven, it doesn't make any difference. We have a lot of animals that became extinct in the past, and there's nothing we can do about it. And if, we, if this animal remains unaccepted, uh, who cares if it becomes extinct? They're obviously rare. There are not very many of them. And as we see them, um, they could be a hominid form. It could be a man. To shoot one would be totally wrong. And um, we are totally opposed uh, to this philosophy. While men ponder the dilemma, to kill or not to kill, many Indians wonder why this preoccupation with proving Bigfoot exists. To the Indian, there is no doubt. Many, like Mrs. Joe Washington, see the hunt for Bigfoot just another intrusion into their sacred past. You'll never be able to, you might say, civilize them like the white man done to us. He's somebody that belongs in the area that he chooses to live in. And if someone did bring him down, He'd never adapt to your way or even mine because his way of life is entirely different from ours, mine, and yours. And I always felt so bad when I hear of Sasquatch hunters that say they're going to photograph this man or most of them refer to him as an animal. And from the stories and things that I was taught by my people, that he is not an animal, he's not a savage, he's a gentle being that just goes about his own way, collecting his own food, clothing, and lives where he chooses. His ingenuity and machinery continues to stalk this creature. A creature described by the Indians as a gentle being, wanting to live in peace in his own habitat. A creature some scientists believe is a link to centuries long past. 
the gorilla is mentioned in, in Greek mythology going back hundreds and hundreds of years, and yet it was not discovered until the late 18th century. And the subspecies, the mountain gorilla, was not identified until early 1900. And um, there are other examples. The fossil fish that was discovered in the Indian Ocean only a few years ago, believed to be extinct uh, for 80 million years. This is the coelacanth, and now it's known to still live off the coast of Africa. Is that the case with Bigfoot? Is this creature really a relative of the Gigantopithecus, a primate that lived over one million years ago in China? The land lends itself to hide such a creature. There is food for it to survive. It does not need man. But it may have to die at the hands of man to prove to him that there is such a thing called Bigfoot. If we assume that Bigfoot is real, and that men are closing in on this seemingly gentle monster, then we must prepare for that first meeting. To have eluded us for so long, Bigfoot must understand men very well. The burden will be on us to understand him. Bigfoot may well be waiting for some sign that we're ready. to the space so they think they can like you know make friends or connect with you in some kind of way and he's talking I feel like he might have caused electrical havoc or water havoc and things like that because his frequency I mean the uh, water heater did explode I would do if I was normally doing like a cleansing he's not related to you so it's invasive mm -hmm. he's decided to be connected to you. Hmm. So you do want to exit that out. Just turn. Let me turn up the volume because I'm having a hard time hearing. I'm having a hard time seeing too. Okay. Gone. Yes, gone. <coughs> Who's here with me right now? I am. Is that Steve? Did you see blood? Who's the little girl? I had a feeling there was a kid here. Who's the little girl? That's that Mitch voice again. Yeah. That's oh, I have chills. That's the same we got with the animal help. I keep hearing help. Okay, how can we help you? I heard Mitch. Did someone hurt you in this stop. house? Stop. Why do you want me to stop? Leave now. Linda, what is this thing you're using? It's scaring me. <laughs> it's called ne necrophonics. And all it is, is basically, it's just a digital spirit box, but there's no outside noises. Whatever the spirits are saying to us, they're saying to us. Mm. Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to leave because I live here and I can't leave. This is my home. It's been my home for a long time. So we need to sort that out. Who did you want to leave? Are you specifically mad at me? I'm just here visiting. Do you know that? Did you understand what Riley said? Why? He's not leaving. This is his house. I will be leaving. Do you understand that? Do. Do. Who knocked down the mirror? <laughs> What's your name? 
Jim knocked wood. Was it an accident? Yes. So you were not trying to get anybody's attention? Oh, did that say Linda? <laughs> it sounded like it. Did you just say my name? What do you think about this quest we're on tonight? This experiment we're doing. How can I help you? Go. He doesn't want. They're they're asking you to leave. They're asking me to leave. They, I pissed them off. Don't worry. It's not, not you, Riley. It's it's, it's Linda. <laughs> I, I have this charm with ghosts. Hence why I'm a ghost. Hunter. Um, Quester. Right. Quester. Quester. Ghost Quester. I need to know by number how many spirits are in this room with me right now. None. Okay, if you say none, there's definitely some. By the way, I did not mention this to you earlier, but ghosts have a great sense of humor. Mm. Okay, and that's, those are the ones I like. When they say, no, I'm not here, some. This is fun. Okay, I like that you're having sense of humor with me. Now... Do you like the dog? Does the dog see you? Does the cat see you? What do you want to tell us? This is your opportunity to tell us why you're here and what we can do for you. So please tell me why you're here. If I don't leave what? I don't know what the second part was, but the definitely the first was if I don't leave. They don't like me. Why don't you like me? I'm a, I'm a yet? I've been called worse. <laughs> Okay, this Shuts is just here to help you. It completely out of the blue, just ejected from the wall. It was like plastered to the wall for like many years. Mm -hmm. It just came off the wall and shattered all of the floor. That was one thing that was yeah. like, I mean, that's, that's too many mirrors. Don't there. love that. Mm -hmm. The other really, truly crazy thing, and I was not here, it was my, my previous girlfriend, she was here. A black cat came into that bathroom one day and like ran like up the walls and was like running around like literally like this like basically the ceiling of the house like <laughs> a real actual cat and then ran okay. back out that window yeah that's no, another that's thing not cool. and then one other time you, you'll <laughs> notice the the window is kind of like messed up and it's because i had a dog that used to escape a lot and when she would escape i'd put her in there for like an hour as like time out oh boy and she lost her mind in there when i put her in one and i never did it again after that and she and that she chewed up the window yeah and actually broke the window trying to get out oh wow there. so that those are all like backstories yeah. on that that i was like wow. there's something I, weird I, in I, there. that guy is very it's like when somebody's like um doesn't get like we're not friends you know like a stalker mm -hmm. that's what he's like okay. you know when you're like we're not friends and there's like yes we are yes we are and okay. that's why when you guys all left and you guys were like bye and i had to use the bathroom <laughs> it's like i i could hear him he's like i don't know why you're doing this and i was like you just need to chill i had pee <laughs> and i'm out and he was like i just you know okay i understand but you know he's like trying to plead his case it's almost uh -huh. like an addiction to you you know what i mean like right. like that's something we all suffer from. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but then also, yeah, when like you got going with the spirit box, like I did feel kind of like a, a weighty, kind of heavy, kind it's of very dark heavy. energy yeah. coming mm. through yeah. that I was like, this is not super comfortable. Yeah, like, yeah mm. it was, I could, yeah, it was heavy. So I got that from both of you. And I'm one so do you both like in, based on your experience, like. Well, I said that I said, I don't like this voice, but see, that's basically what you're hearing. We're letting other people hear what you hear. And even though these these boxes may unleash a few things, they're allowing people that would not normally be able to hear, hear. 
Uh Because now you've heard the voices of Uh the people that have been living in your house. You've actually heard them, you know? Uh And I think think that's incredible. Because to me, if I have a voice and I have a name, that gives me a certain grasp that I did not have a minute ago. And it's something we all heard together, which gives us an extreme power, really. We know, we know about them. BCC Godmother Jen Kirkman here with a pre-recorded message for you. Unfortunately, I can't be there in person tonight, but I wanted to welcome you all to Bigfoot Collectors Club Big Hairy Summer Clubhouse live stream. This event marks a very special milestone in BCC's history. It's episode 250. Almost six years ago, I introduced two out-of-work actors who wanted to make a podcast about Bigfoot to a musician who spent way too much time in his garage. And thus, Bigfoot Collectors Club was formed. Now, I was thinking about it today that I'm called the podcast godmother, but that really makes sense because a godmother happens when a couple has a baby and then they want someone to watch over the baby in case they die. And that's not really what's going on here. I'm not the godmother. I think of myself more as a fairy godmother. Doesn't that make more sense? Because I'm the one that brought this podcast into existence. I mean, sure, it was Michael and Bryce's idea, blah, blah, blah. But if I hadn't met Riley doing another podcast and Michael hadn't been a guest, see, I put it all together. And then because I was there as a fairy godmother, I sprinkled some dust and magic happened. And it's been going on for six years. And I take all credit for it. Anyway, let's start the show. And don't worry, this won't be the last time that you see fairy godmother Jen tonight. Have fun, everyone. Yo, yo, yo. What up, everybody? It's Riley. Uh, kicking things off with a little song, as we, as is tradition. Uh, I'm going to play a song that was requested over Cameo. Uh, and it uh, is one of my favorites. I learned it recently. And uh, I'm coming to you live from a uh, house party in Santa Fe because I'm on the road. So uh, if you hear things in the background, that's just, you know, that's the life we lead. All right. Well, here we go. See if you know it. Sing along at home. World was on fire. No one could save me but you. It's strange what desire will make foolish people do. I never dreamed that I'd love somebody like you. I never dreamed that I'd love somebody like you. No, I don't want to fall in love. No, I want to fall in love with you with you what a wicked game you play 
make me feel this way What a wicked thing to do Make me dream of you What a wicked thing to say You never felt this way What a wicked thing to do Make me dream of you now Don't wanna fall in love No, I don't wanna fall in love With you With you was on fire no one could save me but you it's strange what desire will make foolish people do but I never dreamed that I'd love somebody like you I never dreamed that I'd lose somebody like you No, I don't want to fall in love No, I don't want to fall in love No, I Nobody loves no one. Super producer Riley Bray, everybody. Wow. Hey. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> Boy, Nothing oh. like kicking off a fun time thing with a real sad song. God. <laughs> I remember being 13 years old and listening to that song and being like, well, I guess this is what sex and sadness and love is all about when you're a grown up. A I'm potent gonna, cocktail. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to grow up and just be as sad and as sexy as this guy. God. <laughs> we can all hope. Out, did not did not come true. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Riley, I'd give up a toe to be able to do that. That was incredible, man. I'd I'd chop off one of my toes for something like that. That was great, I mean, man. All you gotta do is just practice guitar. You don't chop off any nah, toes. I'd rather, I'd, I've tried that. I'd rather give up a toe. Riley, <laughs> like if, if moms didn't love you enough, like now that you've covered that song, like you're yeah. hitting each generation of mom uh, <laughs> from nineteen fifty on. Um shout out well to the done, moms. buddy. Well done, Riley. Uh, Hey, Club Scouts. Welcome, everybody, to the Big Harry Summer Clubhouse live stream edition of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. So nice to see you, Bryce. And of course, we've already uh, he's already stolen the show. Super producer (laughs) Riley Bray. Wow. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. We're so excited. It's our 250th episode, which is mind blowing. It feels like we were just putting on our men in black costumes and recording our 200th episode yesterday. Uh, and here, here we are. Yeah. Amazing, man. Uh, quarter of a thousand club. You think we can get there? Yeah. We'll get why there. not? Let's we'll do it. Let's do it. <laughs> 
I mean, what's, I think uh, six, twelve, eight. What's eighteen more years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bryce, we know not to trust your math. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like you know if you add the other side, we're already nearing five hundred total episodes. Wow. So like Amazing. we're we're getting there. By the way, I, it's such a bummer, Jen yeah. couldn't be here uh, live tonight. Uh, we're really sorry about that. But also, I didn't understand what she meant that that was the last. That wouldn't be the last time we saw her tonight. I don't like she. I don't know. She's not doing the show, so I don't know why why she would say that in the intro. I'm very very confused by that, but I don't know. I don't know. Mystery I guess we'll just... fairy godmother business. Yeah, I guess. yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So guys, let's get into it. We have a great night planned. We have uh, some amazing guests for you that are actually here. Um. A UFO update. Uh. Some musical performances. That's not the last one. An expert chat. A T-shirt reveal. And of course, uh, Riley, I think you're going to be, we're going to be checking in with our producer, Mike G, who's running the house, the virtual clubhouse. Hi, Mike G. Thank you for doing this. Uh, and he's going to be shooting some of your comments over the course of the show. Riley will be seeing some of those and reading those as we go along. If you have any comments you want to share now, let's take a peek at them. Uh, and if you have any questions, we will be doing a Q&A at the end of this episode uh, live with our guests as well. So um, what do we got here? If you got your questions, if you got your comments, let us know. We'll be checking uh, this stuff in. Yeah, guys, I've been uh, in and out of the chat. I'm uh, in the desert in Santa Fe. So um, my bandwidth is uh, somewhat limited. So if I stop talking, it's not because you offended me. <laughs> He's very upset that you didn't compliment him <laughs> enough on his music. Bryce, why don't you tell them, what, remind everyone what's going on after the show? Absolutely. Uh, for those who've been here before, you know about them. You want to get them now. Talking about those meet and greet VIPs. That's right after the show. Michael Riley and I will be doing those meet and greet sessions. So if you guys want some one on one FaceTime with uh, with myself, with Mr. Bray or Mr. McMillan, well, you can still pick up those VIP. <laughs> you can still Who's pick up favorite? those VIP passes on popsylounge.com. That's popsylounge.com. Pick up your meet and greet VIP passes it's, right now. It's where you are right now, so you don't really need to go anywhere. Um, all right, before <laughs> we bring in our first guest, why don't we do our big T-shirt reveal? We have a oh, mystery yeah. T-shirt that Ooh. we're going to reveal. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> Just in time for July, we have our brand new official Big Harry Summer T-shirt. And here it is. <laughs> Let's get a zoom in on this, Mike G, if you can. Uh, this is by far the dumbest shirt we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I mean this in a very good way. It is yeah. Bigfoot kicking back, celebrating his 68th birthday um, with a crocodile in a swamp. In a, in a, like he's going full lazy river style. It's You've got your so bad, it's good. Your 60s lettering. <laughs> this looks like something you would have bought straight off the boardwalk in the oh, late yeah. 90s. Yeah. Um, we're very excited about it. And <laughs> I hope you guys dig this. Um, you can pre order this shirt right now. It's live right now on store.bigfootcollectorsclub.com. You can scan that QR code if you want to pick it up. Um, and if you're watching the show live right now, you might be eligible for a free T-shirt. Uh, do we have that? Mike G, do we have the winner yet, or are we going to save that for later in the show? We can do it right now, Let's Michael. In fact, um, six people have already scanned the QR code, so it's nice. already bangers the out there. Um, our T-shirt winner is Kimberly Stubblefield. Everybody. Whoa, congratulations, go, Kimberly. Kimberly. <laughs> the raffle winner. Yeah, someone from Popsy Lounge will reach out to you about your mailing address. Kimberly Stubblefield. Back yep. to you. There right. you go. Now, Kimberly, this shirt goes great with uh, a slushy from 7-Eleven. Just walk over in your flip-flops, mm -hmm. pick one up, or a nice koozie. This shirt is the summer tea. It's a must-have, and now you have it. Yeah, it's all yours, Kim. Congratulations. All right. Let's bring in our first very special guest. You know her from Rutherford Falls and Reservation Dogs, Club Scouts of All Timelines. Please welcome back. First time in the virtual live clubhouse, it is Jana Schmeeding. Jana. What's up, Jana? Hey, what's up? <laughs> You're looking very Pebbles Flintstone tonight. I, it's very fun. <laughs> 
Thank you. Um, I had to put my hair up because I was getting so hot and sweaty oh. from Riley's uh, performance. Oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hubba, hubba. Uh, how out of ten moms, ten being the best, how many moms would you give that uh, performance? Oh, it's a it's a hearty nine out of ten. I feel like wow. the the only thing that uh, you know would bump it up to a 10 as if your shirt was unbuttoned maybe a little oh, bit more notes. but um Fair you know time. these are just things these are notes take the that note. i take the note. not yeah. enough yeah. Oh, oh, candles <laughs> in the background <laughs> yeah mm. maybe some rose oh. petals falling mm -hmm. oh i was like God. it's like the 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 uh, austin powers gif where he squirts the lotion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what we should figure out how to do riley when you're singing is have like some just quiet artificial snowfall on your face, it just like melts as soon as it hits your cheeks. That would I be think, really nice. We mm. could, we could, Lovely. We'll, we'll talk to the coders. I bet AI, yeah. AI could do yeah. that. Jana, how are you? How's your big hairy summer going? Have you been thinking a lot about Bigfoot, <sighs> ghosts, UFOs? What's happening? I have. I've been, um, you know, at the very beginning of the summer, I was just finishing up uh, shooting um, the uh, season three of uh, Reservation Dogs, which is, you know, a very native television show and uh, big into the Bigfoot lore on Reservation really? Dogs. I'm not sure if you've seen, but there is um, there are a couple of crypto appearances oh. um, on that show because, you know, I native mean, people are Bigfoot. Well, people. Yes. obviously are. Yeah, we're we're uh, heavy into the lore and nations, different nations have um you know, different regional beliefs about uh, Bigfoot and like mini Bigfoot. And uh, so, yeah, mini Bigfoot um, not acknowledged enough by the love that European mini Bigfoot. colonists who who uh, took all this lore for themselves. Mini Bigfoot, oh, very um, popular in the northern California nation. OK, do you know it off? Can you riff off the top of your head anything you know about mini Bigfoot? I, I've heard that they're little troublemakers, little mm. tricksters, um, but they're not dangerous and um, that they are. Um, yeah, I guess I've, I've just heard that they are my friends who are Northern California natives um, have talked about that as being sort of like the oral history of cryptozoology that's passed down to them. Yeah. Like their their cryptozoology is little mini bigfoot i love yeah. that mini bigfoot michael i don't know if you recall but we did that story of high strangeness on on uh the love ballad of david huggins yeah uh that contactee who was experiencing ufo entities and and i think he lost his virginity to an alien according to himself and he would paint these uh incredible oh, yeah he would paint these incredible entities that he came across and they were like the the grays and then they ha he had the mantids show up and lo and behold, he also uh, be witnessed uh, little mini Bigfoots. So uh, love that. So, yeah, that whole thing is so strange. But uh, yeah, Bigfoot's scary. I think little mini foot is just I just want to pick him up and hug him, you know, I know. Or or maybe kick him if he's being a little ass. <laughs> he's definitely you know? he's definitely going to bend over and go through your bottom uh cabinets in your kitchen and start throwing things over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like, "Ah!" Just yeah. like a little fucking It's know, like a, it's like having turd. a garbage pail kid as a cryptid. Yeah. That's what many Oh my Bigfoot god, is. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um Jenna, the the chat is dying to know the name of your cat and they all love it very much. <laughs> oh, this is one of two. Her name is Wilma. She is also an, uh, I believe she's an interdimensional being. Oh. She, tr she like disappears and then like will pop up in a, in another location in the apartment. Amazing. It's very weird. And I believe cats are, um, interdimensional travelers. I buy sure. Wilma, is that also a Flintstones reference? Do we have our second Flintstones reference for the night? We do. <laughs> It wasn't. She wasn't named after uh, enough. Wilma, Wilma Flintstone, Wait. or Wilma Fred and Rubble? Wilma. You no, know, Fred Wilma and Wilma. Flintstone, yeah, right. Yeah, and Betty it was and Betty and Barney Rubble. Yeah. Betty and Barney yeah, Rubble. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. Betty and Barney um, Rubble, famously abducted by aliens in 1961. Right, <laughs> of course. Yeah, <laughs> different Betty and Barney. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. got it. Yeah, got it. Fair enough. Um, all right. Well, speaking of aliens. Um, I know it's big hairy summer, but guess what? We we picked the wrong summer to ignore some of this alien news. <laughs> Boy, and now 
wet, hot alien summer has invaded big, hairy summer, you guys. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, a very fun story of high strangeness that happened in basically real time a couple weeks ago. We haven't talked about it on the show yet because we wanted to save it for this discussion on the live episode. And we are going to actually, for those of you who haven't seen it at home, we're watching the full news story, okay? It's going to be about five minutes. We're going to chat over it. We're going to talk about it. But um, basically, let's nutshell this. Uh, aliens, shortly after we had uh tenny john john el tenny on the show and i said nothing we never have like the weird high strangeness cases like we used to have in the 60s and that cosmic trickster just said ah, ah, ah. Yeah. um and <laughs> a, a ufo apparently crashed in vegas this is the week that all that news with uh david grush was was uh dropping um and a family saw two eight feet tall uh claimed to have seen two eight foot tall beings in their backyard <laughs> Jana, you saw this story, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. I saw the second uh, it was on TikTok. Your girl was just <laughs> diving yeah, right girl. Finger on the pulse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's 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 watch the original news story and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. OK, here we go. Love that action news music. It is the Virgin police Naps call. News Everybody station, by will the be way, talking too. about. Thanks for joining us here at six o'clock. I'm Denise Valdez. I'm Brian Loftus. A family says something crashed into their backyard, prompting them to call 911, saying they saw creatures walking around. Our eight news now investigators digging into this. Are they in a trailer park? Now and What's tonight, our David Sharp with the park? video Good you problem. will only see right. on eight news now. David, Brad, Denise, sources telling Bay News Network investigators that several agencies believe something landed or crashed. Whether What's it going through this? guy's head is he has to read this stuff scared the people living on this property now before we show you that video listen to their call for help there's like an eight foot person beside it get off your phone and one's inside and it has big eyes get off your phone start taking a video okay where is this on your property uh in my backyard I swear to God, this is not a joke. This is actually so there's, two, terrified it. so there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard. Yeah. Correct, and they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot. Tall grays, baby. Nine feet, ten foot. I don't know. They're, they look like they look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They have big eyes. Okay. Like, like I can't explain it. And big eye mouth. Ugh. They're shiny eyes and. No. Dude. And they're not human. They're hundred <laughs> percent not human. Okay. Riley, have you seen any of this? I haven't watched it. I mean, I read well, about the it. Now investigators okay. obtaining video just wait, you're in for a treat. Responded to <clears throat> oh, the yeah. call you just heard. You'll see the officers also saw something in the sky that night. But the big question is, what was it? And is it all connected? Leave her alone. It's almost midnight on May 1st when a Las what Vegas Metro hell? Police officer's body cam catches this. Something flashing low in the sky. 911 emergency. Minutes later. There's a, there's like an eight foot person beside it and another one's inside and it has big eyes and looking at us and it's still there. Someone calls 911 reporting two The best part is how scared this backyard. cop is no, going so to right answer now. this yeah. call. He's yeah, he's not ready for tonight's shift. No way. As he sent to the Northwest Valley home. I have butterflies, bro. So he already saw oh, the shooting star, shooting so he's already star. freaked out. Say there's aliens in their backyard. By now, it's this more This is the than family who all saw right the creatures, light. by the way. Meeting up with the caller <clears throat> and his family. What'd you see? It was like a... Like a big creature. A big creature? Yeah, like a long, tiny top. I'm not gonna BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky too, so that's yeah. why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything land in your backyard? Or they see like a big something with light. Say, they see like a big, uh, like a big something with light. What I saw right now, I do believe in it. Police Come on. walk into the backyard to investigate. This is the part Metro we need to see. Out that part of the video because it's considered private property. What's clear? They're taking this call seriously. Hey, Could you like a really imagine question. if a police officer you stopped you? like, have you guys seen any eight foot tall beings running around? Uh, I would normally discount it as nothing. However, um, you can tell this car is just trying to drive away. Too. Yeah, that, uh, no aliens. No, no aliens here. <laughs> that investigation turning up no concrete answers as of Wednesday. Whatever or whoever fell into that yard, long gone within minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
got jokes. Uh, yeah. Don't call us. yeah. yeah. He's got I wasn't jokes, trained bro. for this shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're good. We can fade the video out here. That's pretty much the whole oh, story. Wow. Yeah, that's Man. it. This is yeah. wild. So, so then shortly after this happened, that kid got on YouTube, started his own YouTube channel and 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 further elaborated and we'll talk about that but i'm interested riley and everyone watching comments question you know like what's your immediate reaction to this and and Jana, what do you think um i want to hear riley's first because he hasn't seen any of this i mean first for starters, like just the casualness of everyone's voice in this is astounding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I, I, it's like yeah. Um, there's a uh, something in my yard. It's it's like ten feet tall, and like just the uh, the way everyone handles it is. I guess you you kind of wonder those like if that were to happen to you, you probably would go into that state too, where you just would sort of become so calm and just like yeah, this is happening. There's an um, essence of truth to the delivery. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not overblown. It's not overacted. I mean, it's uh, because I, I feel like it, it it really happened. And I have some more details about the video that the young well, man who called 911 shared. Well, and also the thing that's crazy about it is, I don't know. First of all, why would you ever want to call the cops over to your house? You know what I mean? And what would the chances be? that the cop you called had already been spooked out by seeing something fall from the sky. Right. What are you know the, what I mean? yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just, a, absolutely. It, it's all, if it's a hoax, like if this family's not telling the truth, like they, they boy, oh boy, did they luck out on, on the police officer that showed up at their house? What do you think, Jana? I also think that like a, a person's response to something like this tells us a lot. Like, I don't know if knowing what I know and my belief system about aliens and UFOs, okay. if I would call the police. Right. I may not be like police is like the first place I'm going to go. Who, I don't know what I would do. Are you going to call I us saw first? An alien. Maybe yes, I us. probably would call you guys. I don't know. <laughs> FaceTime. I would FaceTime. Immediate FaceTime. I wouldn't call the fucking police i'm sorry but like i i don't know i don't know like it's just it to me it's like i also do not think i would have the same reaction as these people i would perhaps throw myself into moving traffic i don't know like <laughs> when, when you see an alien when you see this and it changes everything yeah what do you do with that well, I love that he called 911, this family called 911, because it puts it on official record. And and like you said, Michael, to your mm. point, how would this family have any idea that just minutes before that this officer on his body cam caught this uh, this falling object from the sky? Yeah, let's look at that. Mike, do we have a picture of that uh, falling object, I think? Do we have that? We can take another look at that. I mean, it, it looks like not i mean it could be a shooting star or a meteorite i don't know but yeah. it 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 was so well, that's what big that's what nasa said you know a few weeks later after this thing went dark sort of nasa <clears throat> yeah exactly dark nasa a few weeks later after this thing sort of went viral uh motherboard reports that nasa says ufo spotted crashing in las vegas was a small meteor cops say they hope to find aliens now it goes on to say that NASA's planetary defense officer, Lindley Johnson, tells Motherboard that a green fireball observed last month by, among others, a Las Vegas police officer was likely a bright meteor, less than a meteor in size, and certainly not a UFO that fell in anyone's backyard. Well, with words like certainly, Lindsay, you can go on the fuck you bucket, okay? Oh, wow. Oh, right into straight the to the bucket, bucket huh? You straight to what? the bucket with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, because, you know, uh, I just, I'm actually, Lindsay. I'm in the fuck you bucket. How did I get in here? I mean, so how many he scientists with, in this bucket? I know. How can he <laughs> say with certainty that he knows that it wasn't that it certainly wasn't uh, an aliens? Anyway, this story gets weirder uh, by the minute because this young man who called 911 after this story started picking up heat and going viral, he made a video where he's speaking to camera. It's about a seven and a half minute video. And he goes and he basically says, look, I just want to go on record and reiterate my experience of what happened in except, my backyard. He's, he's more like this. 
look, I just want to tell everybody what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, man. I, he's so calm. He's so he's chill. Calm, he's like, I, it my family comes and I saw something weird. It's very weird. <laughs> Listen, you. All you have to. Uh, I. I was studying this young man's body language, and nothing to me comes off as like. Price, as Price like is a body language line. expert now. But you know, he he said some things that really stood out in the world of high strangeness to this encounter. First of all, he said, you know, on May first that he had these aliens land in his backyard. He heard an impact and a bang, which a ring camera caught. Uh, Mike G, I don't know if you have that red. Yeah, uh, that happened. Yeah, there's a ring. Well, uh, yes, this oh. is a photo of the circle, right? Allegedly, oh, a photo of a circle that the craft left. But uh, hmm. you might not have the video of the uh, of the of the young man showing the ring camera where the light goes kaboom and you hear a, a boom. Uh, but that's in his video. He shares that on his video as well. Now, look, he says he heard a big impact and a bang. And when he went outside, he was working on his car at around midnight when this happened. In his backyard, he heard he when he saw this thing, it, it he felt like a shockwave. He said he had sort of an out of body experience that his vision was blurry, and and during that time he heard like a thousand footsteps. Right, Whoa. that was really weird. And then the Whoa. vision becomes unblurry, and that's when he sees these two ten foot tall grayish green creatures. Uh, tall, skinny, big feet, big mouth, the classic a tall alien gray. The big mouth throws me. But big mouth? Yeah, the big mouth throws me because mm. usually the grays have the little pocket mouths. But little let's small go. mouth. Yeah. yeah, well, usually the little grays are only like three feet tall. These yeah. ones are 10 feet tall. Yeah, so. this is a tall gray we're dealing with. So here. it's almost like <sighs> it's almost like time was suspended as they're sort of as they're sort of trapped in this time dilation. Now, he says when he looked into the eyes of these creatures, he felt his whole body freeze like that of like sleep paralysis. And uh, and yeah, and his whole so he, he does take a video. His whole family is there during this video. Now, the now the video Where's the video. I couldn't I couldn't it's see on the Internet. In this video. And, and people have scoured this video because he looks into the backyard. It's very dark back there. Hmm. Now, the Internet sleuths of the Internet have sort of highlighted and you do. The Internet see sleuths it. of the Internet are divided. The that's Internet. Right. The, yeah. The Internet sleuths of the Internet. That's right. They sort of the ISI. Yes. They can't make they can't come to a consensus. No, but they highlighted these sort of you can't you can barely make it out, but you do see these. It's hard to me that the the TikToks of the people putting filters. Yeah, on I the love video it. Yeah, right. Just spot and circling the dark so zooming spots in, where they, I couldn't see anything. They, to me, I not I don't I I've have yet to find one yeah. that has really been like holy. I shit. I took a screen grab as I often do of what I thought might be the best one. Oh, let me show you the ring camera. I'll just show it from my phone really quick. Yeah. Uh, had a whole here. week to send this stuff in, but we're just going to watch yeah. it over Bryce's phone. <laughs> yeah, Bryce does. Bryce, I'm a last minute type of guy here. Check this out. This is the ring camera. There's the kid. And uh, is he wearing a Simpsons hoodie? That's the best. I watch this. So. It's really hard to make out like, what right? you're showing you us, Bryce. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. We could hear well, it. You Everybody see look the it up. you see the lights sort of just go on in this neighbor, and then you hear like <laughs> anyway. So he says, you know, as he goes back out to to see if these creatures are still there, um, they're gone, and he leaves. What and then there's an imprint in the back of his yard, this circular imprint uh, in the back of his yard. Now he said that his family went in to pray because they were horrified. When they were praying, whilst they were praying, they heard this like human like scream, like this terrifying scream. And, and they heard footsteps on the roof. Ew. Now, uh, very the reason signs. I, the reason the I love on the roof. Is it real? Well, I just love all these sort of outside of the box details that someone who wasn't very clued into high strangeness wouldn't really mm. pick up on. And to me, it highlights the authenticity of of this story, because. As I'm sure that our listeners know, we've shared many times before, and you can just go through Jacques Vallée's book of Passport to Magonia and read hundreds and hundreds of accounts that are just like this. This one just happens to be well documented. Uh, you have the 911 call. You have the body cam showing the object falling from the sky. You have a whole family who who uh, says they're seeing this thing. So it would take not just one liar or hoaxer, but an entire family uh, willing to go ahead and 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 
you know, lie or hoax this thing. And so to me, there's a there's a good amount of authenticity to what happened in Las Vegas. Jana, I want you to have a chance to really chime in here and give me your full opinion on on what like my girlfriend, for example, when this all happened, she goes, what what makes you decide what story what a story sounds like bullshit and what's believable? Right. To borrow a phrase from our own show. Like, does do you believe this story? I do. I do believe this story. I feel as if the way it has been presented by this family is believable. They do not seem like they are people with an agenda. They called, I, I see um, a, a commenter who said that making fake 911 calls are a felony in Las Vegas, mm. which like <laughs> further backs up the point that, like, you know, why would they? go to such lengths this, this they treated this like an emergency you That's know yeah. and yeah. people don't just treat things like an emergency especially an entire family and they seem terrified but they're also like curious i mean th their reaction is what has sold me into believing i believe them i yeah. don't know what to believe beyond their account sure. um but i believe that they witnessed something um, that was very strange and out of their realm of, you know, understanding. And I don't know beyond that if it's a hoax or if somebody f zoomed a drone with a basket, an NBA basketball player dressed up as a <laughs> gray alien inside into a backyard. I don't know. Uh, Mike Not G. Likely. Mike G. Says that we have. He's ripped the uh, ring cam video, I believe. Um, so let's take a look at that. I feel like a real, I should be like smoking a cigarette and, uh, and doing <laughs> this show. To my channel. Oh, oh, oh it is a Simpsons hoodie. I'll tell you what happened to me on May 1st, 2023. Yeah. We'll watch. I'm going to try to explain. Yeah, this is like seven minutes, the right? Maybe opinions. we can turn this volume down a little bit, Mike, I'm and we'll, this story we'll skip ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is Bryce, the, do you know where the, the ring video. video? Yeah, it, it, it comes pretty soon. You can keep this playing. Let's just put it on mute, Mike. This well, kid is awesome. While he's while he, this kid is also very believable, like he just yeah, a, that's he what I'm saying. Just look at the body today. language of him yeah. trying to like go through this and uh and, and recount his story, you know. Yeah, and right. what a smart move to go. Oh, here it is, right here. Here we go. Oh, what? Oh. We'll get it. We'll get it. Oh, he switched back. Where are you gonna say, Jana? What a what a smart move to go immediately onto YouTube and to put it out into the world like this happened. And here's yeah. my evidence. Here are the well, receipts. Oh yeah. The news isn't going to cover all that weirder stuff. And the thing that, that, that jumped out at me out of the whole thing that he said was, I mean, so much high strangeness in the phenomenon surrounding the crash and the sensory overload and the thousand footsteps and stuff. But he talked about the staring at the creature's eyes and feeling that sleep paralysis thing. Oh, here's the video of the backyard. Now his whole family's there. You can turn it up a little bit, Mike. You'll hear them scream. And they're they're the trying to the film video, it. Me and my brother went to go pick up my tools. Uh -huh. Then my brother called me, <laughs> and he told me. He's got to go get his tools. I mean, yeah. Behind the forklift. So but I the look, I... keep in mind, I'm facing the forklift, and then I see. Yeah, it's the... behind the forklift. But he talks about being in that sleep paralysis state and we've heard that time and time again even in yeah. the aerial <clears throat> school phenomenon story the kids would talk about how mesmerized they would become when they looked in the face of these things in the eyes of these things yeah. and that grayish green coloring is very similar to what we've also heard before to people who've actually seen this stuff a lot of this now that's playing we yeah, saw in the in the news yeah. but we'll um we'll throw up a link eventually in the show notes so you guys can check out this uh, uh YouTube video but um let's read some of these other comments here before we move on Riley Here's what do we got camera. yeah i mean uh well Bryce the the chat is is really loving you um <laughs> uh one one person saying uh, Bryce is the guy who has a cork board connecting it all which facts <laughs> uh Scottish Graham says Bryce knows what it's all about um we got uh, I, someone had a great oh Bryce is a living fever dream agree <laughs> And then someone else just said, it's just signs outtakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. I did have well, a lot of people texting me, Bryce, what's going on with this? I 100% real. You need to follow yeah. this story. Honestly, <laughs> Bryce, you are you are mol our molder. Like, you are our, our molder. Like, you have to it, – it's just your role now. You've been well, – um, You've been adopted in Jimmy I with the boat writes, And I think if this is the Jimmy I'm thinking of, it's one of our very first yeah, L files yeah, it's that uh, letter writers. Yeah. Jimmy says uh, X Files cops episode vibes. A hundred percent. I was doing the same thing the first time I watched this. Yeah. 
Bryce, I think, story... Stephen, I think Stephen Mayer Jr. sums it up the best. He says, I adore how feverishly passionate Bryce is. I wish I believed in anything the way Bryce believes in the phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, and in, by the way, Bryce believes in everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gut, my, I, you know, I just go with a, my gut on a lot of this stuff, and my gut's just telling me there's something to this story. Yeah. And it's not just a, a, a meteor. I'm sorry. The big, you know? the big thing, though, is always just like, where's the fucking crystal clear video? If I these know. people had eyes on this thing Mm. you know where is it where is it because this seems like something they said they were watching it for minutes you know well the backyard is completely dark and he's got a he's got a phone and he's just you know well look we all know we've all tried to shoot stuff on our iphone at night and it's garbage so there is that you know what i mean yeah yeah um (laughs) all right well what any final thoughts on this uh vegas alien case i know george knapp he believes the family too he went out there and said it there you go Final thoughts from the chat is everyone agrees Bryce is our molder. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael, you are Scully, and wow. uh, I'm Skinner with hair and a guitar. Yes, I think. Yeah. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Oh my god. I'll take you can that. Be, you can be. <laughs> Who are the little nerds? You the can little... be. Uh, yeah. Patrick, uh, what's his face? God, why can't I remember his name? Um, who was the T T two thousand or T one thousand? He was a oh, late, right. late edition. Oh yeah. Unless you want to be the smoking man, Jana, but that's no fun. I don't want to be a smoking man. I'll be Bryce's um a- abducted little Samantha sister. Mulder. You want to oh, be okay. Samantha right. Mulder? Great. Nice. Yeah, that's Perfect. good. What happened to Done. Samantha? Done. Robert Patrick, thank you, Mike G. <laughs> of course, I uh, had it and then it was gone. All right, I can't believe this. We're already moving so quickly uh, through this. Now, Jana, you're going to come back a little bit later, but before you go, obviously we need to catch up on Reservation Dogs. Is there anything you want to plug uh, to uh, our audience right now? Um, no, that's that's really it. Uh, uh, check out the uh, season three drops on uh, of Reservation Dogs on FX on Hulu. Great, August third. Great, check it out. Great, we got to catch up. I got to see some of those the, some of that Bigfoot stuff. No doubt. Yeah. All right, Jana, you go hang out backstage. We'll come back in a little bit. Um, thank you so much, Jana. Thank you, everybody. Wet, hot, alien summer invades uh, big, hairy summer. I'm sure this is going to going to continue all summer long. Um, but it's too bad, guys. Like we've um, we've hit a little bit of a speed bump here. You know, now that we're caught up, we're like we've yeah, we're stalling out a little bit. Wait, yeah, what's up? Well, this is the part where Jen Kirkman was supposed to come on and play Big Harry Bullshit or Believe It with us, but she couldn't make the show live. So I don't know what we're going to do. That's all right. Let's just skip it. No, uh, we can't skip it. It's a fan favorite segment. I mean, it is too bad we can't like astrally project ourselves into the past and do it with Jen before she cancels. You know what? I guess we'll just give it up. Give it Give it all up. Give it up. Stop no, showing no, us. No. Call it a night. Just hang no, it no, no, no. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on. Riley, I... You might be onto something, man, with this astral projection thing. Just, ho- hold on. Wait, Bryce, you're, you're really what? leaning into this uh, what are molder, you doing? molder bit here. What are you... Uh... Yeah, Molder, come back. What are you doing? What, All what right. are you doing? <clears throat> now, Michael, do you remember this CD that you gave me of Uri Geller? Uh, uh, wait, no, wait. Time out. I do. Yeah. You gave that to me. You bought one right. for yourself, and you gave <laughs> oh, it to me. There's no right. world where I would give you a, your, a Uri Geller CD. Yeah. Okay. Well, that checks out. I'm not going to yeah. enable this. <laughs> yeah. Problem. Okay, well, you well, have. Just, just, just listen to me, okay? All right. There's something I never told you about this CD. Look, when I hold this CD, okay, and I mm-hmm. chant Uri Geller, Uri Geller, Uri Geller. Like that over and over again. Uh-huh. It sort of it allows this astral form of mine to travel back in time. And I think if we're all doing it together on the live show, then maybe we could all travel back in time and in our astral forms and, and do the segment with Jen. That is truly wild even for you, Bryce. Okay. Bryce, yeah. there is no way that is actually going to work. Michael, just trust the magic of Uri Geller, okay? Just trust the magic of Bryce. Okay. Well, all right. If you put it that way, fine. <sighs> all right, fine. What do we need to do? Okay, nothing, nothing. Just, just chant along with me. Now, when did Jan cancel? Uh, Tuesday. Great, great. So we'll go back Monday. Okay, just before she changes her mind. All right. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Yeah. What do we have to lose? Here we go. Uri Geller. Uri, Uri Geller. Geller. Uri Geller, Uri Geller, Uri Geller, Uri Geller. Wow! Whoa! Wait a minute, I'm in my office, but it's definitely not set up for the show. Yeah! 
oh, when I, I'm shirtless, which is how I always roll when I'm alone, but maybe I should throw something on. All right. Well, I'm wearing my Funko Pop The Last Jedi t-shirt, which I always wear on laundry day, so it must be Monday, June 19th. Oh, my God. Holy shit, Bryce. I think it worked. Yeah. Dude, we astral project ourselves into our past bodies. Thank you, Yuri Geller. I told you he was magical. Shut up. I'm uh I'm sending an invite to Jen. Let's see if she answers. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh where's Riley? Oh yeah, good question. I hope he's not lost in the time stream. Hmm. <gasps> Hello? Jen! Jen! Rise, Michael! Wait, what are you doing here? The live stream isn't until Saturday. No, Jen, that's why we're here. We came from the future to tell you that you cancel on us. I do? But I always honor my commitments. Yeah, I know. We don't know why you do that to us. It's weird. I must have had a logical reason or, or I'm a dick. Oh, anyway, we, we used a Yuri Geller CD to astral project ourselves into the past, your present, to play bullshit or believe it with us. That way you can still be part of the show. Oh, this all makes total sense. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Great. Okay, I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. If you're open to it, you're going to say believe it. If you're not open to it, you're going to say bullshit. This is a game we like to call Big Hairy Bullshit or Believe It. All right, Jen Kirkman, on your mark, get set, ghosts. Uh, believe it. Bigfoot. Bullshit. M UFOs. <laughs> believe it. Mothman. Bullshit. Dogman. Bullshit. Bat Squatch. Uh, bullshit. Hairy alien UFO knots. Bullshit. But you believe in UFOs. I, I believe in unidentified flying objects, thank you. Could they have hairy <laughs> pilots? I don't know yet. They're okay. not identified. Okay, this is a French throwback. 1700s, a giant wolf that terrorized a few villages called uh -huh. the Beast of Galvedon. Oh, totally believe it. Goat man. No, bullshit. M Momo, the Bigfoot of Missouri. Oh, bullshit. The Yowie, the Bigfoot of Australia. Believe it. <laughs> the Jersey Devil. Bullshit. Mystery big cats. People are seeing large cats all across the country and they don't know why. Yeah, believe it. Of course they are. Sasquatch. Just another name. Don't try to get me. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bigfoot bodies were recovered after the eruption of Mount St. Helens. They were not. Bullshit. Bigfoot creatures have penetrated the subterranean infrastructure of Edwards Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. Nope. Bullshit. Jen Kirkman, you could outsmart a werewolf. Don't believe it. Interdimensional Sasquatch. Bullshit. Telepathic Sasquatch. Bullshit. Invisible Sasquatch. Believe it. Yes. B Bigfoot looks blurry in every photo because he is blurry. Oh, believe it. Finally, in our original timeline, the famous Bear family's last name was spelled Berenstein, not Berenstain. Believe it? Great. Well done, Jen Kirkman. Okay. Amazing. It's been a while since you've played that game. I know. Oh, my God. Well, I i mean, I, I wonder if my answers have changed at all. And But I, I promise, I always mean what I say in the moment. I mean, you know? this was an updated list anyway, so there were some new ones. I'm, I want to know why you don't believe in the Missouri Bigfoot, Momo, but you're open to the Australian Bigfoot, the Yowie. Because I've been to Australia many times. It's a magical land full of strange things, and I can totally see it. Haven't you ever yeah. been to Missouri? Also full of... Also full of strange things. <laughs> but they're, they're very explainable. It's usually okay. uh, involves like too much snow and drinking. Okay. Yeah, yeah it that's... is the show me state, you know? Yeah. Fair enough. Um, hey, real quick. We already talked about this with Jana Unplugged in our future. Uh, your future, our present. But what do you think about all this UFO stuff that's been going on this summer? These aliens in Vegas. The, 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 this guy coming out and saying that he, he's been told secondhand that uh, these UFOs are being recovered and captured by 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 uh, the military. Well, as you know, I go back and forth on this all the time and think it's some kind of op or 
you know, I mean, I don't think he's lying. He had to testify under oath. There are consequences for that. But he is only able to prove that he's hearing secondhand information because I guess he can't really show us the proof. I don't know if I, I don't know. I go back and forth thinking, why am I believing? I, I don't know. I mean, I always said if anyone is going to just blurt out that there are aliens and is going to be messy with classified information, it's going to be Trump. Right. And since he didn't, that made me stop believing in aliens ever having come here or there, <laughs> there, or there being any secret whatevers. But now I'm realizing that not even the presidents know about it. Well, we don't know what was in all of those boxes yet. Oh, we still, he, we still he would have said. So the, the proof <laughs> yeah, I found the best aliens. They come to America. They love Trump. That's why they came during my presidency. No. You never know. He would have one like in Mar-a-Lago, like E.T., sure. Yeah. Um, and he'd be wearing like Melania's dresses to be totally just like E.T. But anyway, I don't know. I go back and forth. I want to believe. I think it would be very exciting, even if they're here to kill us all. Like, what a way to go. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I, I want to be convinced. I just need proof. Yeah. People say it's an exciting time to be alive. But if aliens killed us all, what an exciting time to die. Exactly. Either way, we Well win. said. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, Jen, thank you so much for for playing with us. Yeah, and um, yeah, I guess that's uh, I guess that's it for now. Yeah, well, that, no, no problem. I was glad to do it. Um, but actually, if that's all you need from me, then I guess I don't need to be there on Saturday, right? Wait, what do you mean? Well, we just did my bit, so I don't need to be there live on Saturday, right? Wait, wait, you're you're canceling on us? It totally makes sense now. Okay, so. By traveling back to the past, you've created a future where you don't need me to appear on the show live. So I have no choice but to cancel. I'm not a dick. No, no, Michael. We, dude, we fucked with the future and now we've created a time paradox. We're the reason Jen cancels on us. Sorry, I can't be there on Saturday. Wait, 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 wait. Can you bang out a quick intro video for us and send it to me no later than Friday? I guess. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. Dang. Oh. Well, that sucks. Oh, well, yeah. she was great as always. I well, love let's get Jen. back to the present. We still got a show to do, man. Hopefully Riley's there. Yeah. Yuri Geller, take us back to Saturday night. Send us. Send us. Send us. Send us. Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're back. Whoa. Hey, Riley, we lost you, man. Where did you go? That was so weird, you guys. My astral form split from you, and what? then I ended up in the past where I recorded an exclusive performance with the band Tommy. No. What? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Do you guys think the Cub Scouts would want to check it out? Um, I mean, because no, nobody's seen it yet, because past future me emailed a link to myself uh, after we edited it, uh, but so now I can show it to everybody. Okay, this time travel logic is barely holding together, but yes, yes, this, we want to see it. This one's a no-brainer, Riley. Set it up. Don't worry about the logic, guys. It all it holds. Uh, okay. Well, this is a this is our upcoming single. Uh, it's a song called "More Time," uh, and this is the band performing it live. And you can see me in uh, one of my signature pink dresses. Yeah, uh, baby! World you, premiere. World premiere of this live video of our upcoming single "More Time." So let's check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, dude. Wow, 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 wow. That was... <laughs> God, I fucking love Tomy. I'm like the biggest it's... Tomy fan. Me too, from, man. Like, oh, thanks, unbelievable. Guys. I mean, so, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a fanboy of the band that I'm in. Like, Pam is just her <laughs> voice. Every time we play, I'm just like, keep it together, keep it together. Like, she's Dude. she's something else. I, it's, and also, our drummer, Kevin, is like one of the best drummers I've ever played with. And it's just, that band is just such a joy. So it was really exciting to get to show it all to you guys first. You're the first people to see that. So And you're in it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, I'm, I'm, and I'm no slouch. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, man. The song was even about time. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was thinking about uh, how I was tra time traveling like the entire time I was playing. It's of incredible. course, yeah. Wow, yeah. It's like we really thought this whole segment through. Mm. <laughs> All yeah. right, you well, look it's hot in your time. dress too. Yeah, you oh, do you. look you look really hot in a dress. Um, Thanks, it's boys. time for our next guest. This week we are sitting down with one of our BCC experts, Bryce. Why don't you? I mean, would you like to do the honor of, of oh, introducing him? It would be an honor to do right. the honors. Here we go. Ah, you guys are gonna love this next guest. He's a natural born Bigfooter, basically raised in a family that believed in all things crypto, uh, cryptid. Uh, their summer vacations were spent trudging through dense forests in search of Sasquatch, even traveling to Scotland to find proof of old Nessie. He's traveled the world following reports of strange animals and the cousins of Bigfoot from the jungles of the Amazon, looking for the Mapinguari to the mountains of East Asia in search of the Orang Pendek. Here's a little clip from his hit doc, The Skunk Ape Experiments, Ooh. part two. Ah. Mm. Previously on the Skunk Ape Experiments. Our goal is to push this fucker into the field where Bill will be set up and waiting. Uh, making their way to the same exact spot we saw that Bigfoot seven years ago, which is crazy. That thing's huge, bro. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and how did you even notice him? How could you not? <laughs> Eight <laughs> foot tall. The reason why I think it cursed me is because I've seen so many of them. Uh, we're about to do something that we've kind of done before, but never to this level, dude. You're going to take ritual magic and drugs together. You can live an offering, like I'm telling you. Until you see it, that means nothing. Hey, I need all you guys to move through now. Ten! Ten! You ten! Wow. Please welcome to the show. I thought you'd like that. Mr. Ryan Golombeski, or as we like to call him, RPG. RPG. Absolute. Now, I, I, I have to jump in right here. RPG, welcome. And I heard three things in that video that jumped out at me. Skunk Ape, Ritual Magic, and Drugs. What is yes. going on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, boys, and everyone in the audience, buckle in, because here we go. Let me tell you about the 60s, when the hallucinogenic, the hallucinogenic journey was starting to take off, and they quashed it. You can go to Terrence McKenna. You can mm. talk about the stone ape theory. You can talk about the gentleman that went and uh, deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they all came to the same point that psilocybin or some type of it, and everywhere you go in the world, they have their own, has helped us reach new levels, go to new places. Now, the only thing right now they're willing to admit is it could treat depression and anxiety. And so let me tell let's paint a picture for you, right? We're in a haunted house. We know it's haunted because before we even started everything in the film, The Skunk Cape Experiments, all the animals were pouring out of the fields and circling the building like a little like the eye of a storm. I mean, crazy things went down. Right. And before that even happened, we're sitting there going, oh, my God, is this like is this real life? Like, how can this happen? So I'm sitting mirror gazing while my partner downstairs, Stacy Brown, Jr. Shout out. He's doing what is arguably or what people like to say might be the scariest thing of all time, which is reciting the hymn to Pan, which I don't know if you guys mm. have heard of that before. But Aleister Crowley, most evil man in the world or maybe just the most misunderstood. So he's doing that downstairs and I'm staring in a mirror. And before we go in, just like you guys mess with each other, they're telling me oh, the demons are going to come right over your head like this. The aliens are going to come in like this and poke your eyes up. So they freak me out. Right. And, I'm, <laughs> and you got to be cool. Right. Because you got to stay focused. You got to do your job. Well. 
What does psilocybin do? It allows you to face whatever you're going after with the wonder and the compassion and, and just the awe of a child. Hmm. And what does that really do? It takes your anxiety down. Now, I haven't, you know, it's hard for me to sit still, as you can see. I'm a... So for me to be able to get right into a flow state and immediately uh, go in, I, I need that boost. And so what it really helps is it helps you to get there and to be okay with whatever is about to happen, be that pan appearing before me, be it aliens showing up or what we were really there to look for is skunk apes, you know, is pan actually uh, a misinterpretation of what Bigfoot is or okay. just, you know, an alternate story. Yeah. Well, unpack Man. that for us. Tell us what people think pan is and tell us what how that might relate to skunk ape. Well, if you look at Pan, Pan is a mythological creature, but could it have been real, right? And could have they misidentified certain parts as they tried to, like, put it into a box? Mm -hmm. What if it really is a relic hominid, you know, a misunderstood relic hominid? Because if you go back to a lot of the old religions and, and a lot of the old beliefs, what they did was they attached an animal to a god or they attached plants to gods. And they did this so that you would respect it all, right? Now... <laughs> If, if, if that's the truth and they're out there, so you have to start with like a certain level of respect before you approach these things. And in my humble opinion, if I'm sitting there and I'm able to eliminate my fear in the approach, because right, like you're, you see someone's freaked out to meet you, you know what I mean? Like Riley, after that performance, they're like the Beatles coming up to you like, oh God, oh God. But <laughs> you're not going to approach if they're scared, right? Because you don't want right. to freak them out. Sure. So I think one of the key components to actually making contact, and that's from aliens to whatever, yeah. is uh, is to reduce that fear to a point where that you're open and that they could approach you. Because I, I think respect goes both ways. And if anything, you know, they know we're here, man. They're in the woods. They're in our backyards. They're everywhere. But they live in such a manner that we don't see them for the most part because we're all walking around with our with our phones up our butts, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're too preoccupied yeah. with ourselves and our own egos to really sit and identify these things and sit with them. Well, anyway, psilocybin helps you it helps like take you there and helps you be present, which is so hard, I think, for all of us. And all I can tell you is when I was looking in that mirror, not to give too much away from the film, it took about 20 minutes because I'd be lying if I if I said I wasn't scared, you know, to do it. Um, but once it kicked in and I was able to focus, I controlled my breathing. Thank you, Wim Hof. And I kind of got into it. Um, this is all I can tell you. And, and remember, I'm, I'm micro dosing. I, I did not, you know, I did not take enough. No heroic have, doses here. No heroic doses, no heroic doses. I wanted it to be used as medicine. And that's right. what all of this is. You know what I mean? It's medicine. Mm -hmm. So no lie, man, these these hands and all of a sudden the picture in, in, in the mirror changed and it was a campfire and they couldn't get close to the light. And I don't know what that means, but I saw bone hands and, and like them trying to like look back at me and I could hear things around me like it, it became very alive, you know. And I was just like, oh, my God. And then I had a vision and like this it kept morphing. And then there was a vision of outside and I saw outside. And it looked like mangroves and they were standing there staring. And the amazing thing. Right. So, that, OK, whatever. He's he's microdosing. You know, people like that. Stand. But uh, at the same time, outside, somebody saw an orb shoot through the trees. Whoa. Two Whoa. fighter, whatever you'd like to call it. So in the same place that I had seen this vision of the two things being there, did I manifest it? Were they there? You know, that's open to discussion, but we have things linking the high strangeness, which for me, that's the clues you begin to follow or uh, Bryce Fox Mulder would follow. <laughs> Man, I, I love all this, the getting on the same energy level yeah. as possibly what these creatures are. You mentioned Terrence McKenna. We mention him all the time on the mm -hmm. show. I think he was quoted as saying something like um psilocybin is to the alien phenomena as the microscope is to microorganisms in other words it's right under our nose yep. and we're missing yep. it you know I, I i love just your openness to this uh to using ritual magic and 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 these natural uh these natural entheogenic chemicals i mean this is this is the type of research i think that we could be doing more of um I, I, I think it's incredible, man. I can't wait to watch this. And and uh, so, you know, you, you bring up so many amazing points. And and um, where does this kind of help you determine where the, you know, so many people are involved and you hear it all the time, you know, part of these two camps, a, a flesh and blood creature mm -hmm. or 
or possibly something else. But I think you're you're on this third track that not not a lot of people are are really willing to go down. But I think there's something here. Um, talk to us more about the implications of thinking outside the box to get closer to the evidence that we might be looking for. Everything you've ever been taught is a lie. Start there. When you are brave enough to say, I'm going to rebuild my knowledge base, then you are on your journey, right? Look, look at each one of you. You're all successful in your own way. And at some point you had to launch, right? You had to kind of go do your own thing. And that's scary for us because, you know, you dig roots and you're always one root away from ignorance and from, and from being stuck. Mm-hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, we've been lied to about everything, not to go too crazy. In it. And when I started doing that, you said something earlier, Bryce, which, which I absolutely love. You trust your gut. Okay, your, your gut, that's the first thing that develops in you when you're a baby. You have brain cells in there. And then from there, it comes to your heart, which we say, trust your heart. Sure, trust your gut first. And then your brain. And in our culture, we're, we're, we're stuck in here. This is our prison. They, they teach us to like, it's only what you can see, only this, right? It, it's, mm. But you have to get back into your primal self. You have to get back into your body to become present, you know, and I think once you get back to there and you and you can look beyond the illusions, you know, uh, what you, what you are left with is the answers, the truth. And not only that, you will begin to attract like minded people who are willing to to take the plunge. You know, it's scary. It's not easy to do these things. And it's not even just the actual fear of, oh, my God, what if the devil shows up and attacks me? It's the shame game that comes with it, which honestly mm-hmm. is the most powerful mm-hmm. thing right now in our culture. So, yes, I think the implications are is um, you guys are a lighthouse and you've invited me here and this message will now be blasted out on top of all the wonderful things you guys talk about. And that's going to inspire someone. It may not be me. And I'm and I'm, I love getting older because I'm OK with it not being me now. I just hope to inspire someone that finds the truth. And then we can all sit back with a stogie and a drink and be like, yeah, I knew it. boy, I knew it. <laughs> um, so that's really what I'm hoping. Like I'm moving more into the luminary part of my life. Like I, I want to share and I want to go on great adventures with great people. And uh, but I also I you know how it is when you get together with a group of friends, you push each other, you push each other. And, yeah. and what is a Bigfoot hunt, really, at, or at least for me and my friends, it's it's really a rite of passage. And every time I go, I come back a little braver. I stand a little taller for my girl, you know, like, yeah, check me out now. My kids, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little more rooted, you know, but that's mm-hmm. that's it. Like and maybe that's a little selfish that I also get that out of it. But mm-mm, mm-mm, you we. It, if you're scared, if it if it like you're like, eh, I'm not sure, go for it. Unless it's you know truly, truly dangerous, don't. But but go for it because that's where you need to be. Have you and- had RPG? I love all that. Have you oh, had yeah. any experiences just to swing in the other direction for a moment? Oh, any, we're swinging now. Okay. A, any, yeah, any. Oh, this is a Bigfoot Swingers Club. I really forgot <laughs> you to didn't get it. that memo. Yeah, um, the the uh, it's where we all trade cryptids and we date <laughs> yeah. each other's cryptids. Um, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Uh, have you had any tangential? What someone would describe a tangential cryptid encounter where you're like here in Woodnox or you're seeing something out there without all the ephemera, without having to do a ritual. Oh, I, 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 well, that's interesting. Uh, hardly ever until so I worked on finding Bigfoot. And uh, for years, I would go out and then I love calling it the white man method or the TV method where you bang tree, you do all that stuff, right? <laughs> well, one day I decided to actually listen to all the indigenous elders that that would give us knowledge, just hand it to us, you know, whatever, you know, what's on the Kardashians tonight. And, and they said, you got to be respectful. So before you go out, you use mind speak, you telepathically you can call it prayer call it whatever makes you feel comfortable but you send a Mm. message out to where you're going and then when you get there you leave an offering you know i have a little tobacco and sage and different things that i've gathered from different uh tribes and i leave it or even if you find just a little rock that you're like oh this is my new favorite rock i'm gonna keep this and put it to my windowsill but you attach your vibration and your energy and your love to it so even though you want to take it leave it leave it it's Mm -hmm. you know it's respectful so you do that and then you walk around and Guys, no, no lie. When I started doing that on that show, because we did put ourselves in the right places, it all started to happen frequently. Mm. Well, I would almost say every time, but that's that's a little bold. Uh, but it happened so much that that I was like, OK, there's something to this. You know, Bryce, you you had an experience similar to that on the latest season of Expedition Bigfoot, didn't you? Well, I you know what Ryan's talking about, like I, when I so there was an episode where we wanted to uh 
gear up the uh the 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 car with cameras in front and back side to side infrared and all that and i really wanted to to see something so i didn't tell anybody the producers or anything but before i went out i performed my own little ritual magic ceremony yeah. uh in in the hopes of summoning something uh because i think ryan's spot on i think there's an element of uh, of call it what you will magic uh, an element of chaos that needs to take place for for to sort of uh, to make these encounters more 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 likely and uh, and so anyway I performed a, a little ritual of my own and uh, and and yeah I'll be damned I, when when we were out there in the late at night I did see something uh, go across that road and I was like oh my god and so and so look there's so much of this phenomena. And, 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 you know, it's all under the umbrella of this trickster archetype element. There's psychic energy attached to all of it. Mm -hmm. And when we start to peel back the layers of what can contact and connect with these entities and ourselves, it's, it's something under the surface. And, uh, and, and like Ryan said, you know, sometimes we need to use outside of the box methods to help us get there. You know, it's your intention. It's, it's like you, we manifest that we've, it's, you know, I don't, I'm not bashing anyone, but we've given our power away a lot, mm. a lot of different organizations. Yeah. Mm. If you can harness that and God forbid a team of Avengers, just whatever you want to, if you come together and harness that and push it and move it, I think the sky's the limit. So really I'm just broadcasting until I get a good collection of weirdos and we go out and, and the gate, it just opens. It just... There came a day when a challenger <laughs> an intention rose that only the weirdest could yes. rise to. I that's that's kind of what I really heard a lot and what and I'm into I'm opening into all this stuff, but like the thing that kept popping up is that word intention, and you kind of took the next question out of my mouth, like what is it about intention? Um, what is it about that? That's like this key element. Like what is this? What is it about the simple act of saying, I'd like to do this and paying a respect to that action that you want to take? I mean, some people would call that just centering yourself, like you said, calming yourself. But sure. what is it about intention that you think leads to some type of result? You set your vibration. Mm. That's it. You said it, you know, and, and once you, once you have purpose, uh, you need to know where you're going, right? So you have to lay a roadmap down to get to where you would like to be. So mm -hmm. for us, we pick, we would like to meet a skunk ape or Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. And then you get on that and you just ruminate on that, ruminate on it, ruminate on it. And I, I might just tell everyone, you'd be surprised if you, First of all, you'll be surprised that you can't focus on anything for very long at all because all these crazy thoughts come pouring into your head, doubts, fears, for future, past. And if once you kind of like go, whoa, I'm a crazy person, and you dial that back in, then you can actually set a path and create a strong signal, which I would argue is a vibrational signal, and then you begin mm. picking up that channel. And that channel comes to you and you draw it to you or it pulls, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't know how much deeper. So it's you know, sort of like tuning into the to wherever they are on their side of whatever the other side is and then being, OK, they're not freaked out or they're coming in with a good mm -hmm. intention. Therefore, like we can actually communicate here. You're broadcasting. They can hear you like we can't that I, I believe we have the skill set to uh, I watched this one thing which got me into animal communication. And you what you grew up, you're watching Dr. Doolittle and you're like, it's just make believe because it's a lot of what movies are about to make you think everything's make believe. Um, but that's real. Anna Brockenrich, and I'm sorry if I murdered her last name. Mine's Golombeski. Everyone murders all the time. But uh, I watched a thing called uh, Diablo the Panther. Have you guys ever seen that? Heard of that? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. No. It, late, late night before bed, instead of Pornhub, check this out. Anna Brockenrich. <laughs> and, and she does this animal communication. And I won't go too It's a longer story. But there is a Black Panther named Diablo. Um, hates everyone. Won't let anyone near it. They, they send him to the, the Santa Claus of animal rehabilitators. He can't even get near it. So they bring in an actual animal communicator. And she just sits there and she goes, okay, two things. The cat wants to know how its friend's doing that, that it lived near when it was back in the zoo. And they're like, okay. So they found out, oh, it's doing fine. Whoa. And how the F would you like it if everyone, every time they saw you, called you devil? I don't mm. like my name. No lie. Mm. And they're like, oh, oh, wow. So they uh, they literally just switched the name to spirit 
And that panther, no lie, got up, walked out, stopped hissing at everyone, stopped, and began to go back to living its life. Whoa. That's right? Incredible. So <clears throat> unless that's a lie, unless these people are just, you know, classically trained Juilliard actors. Sure. And just, we're all in a... Dude, there's something else I know there. some classically trained actors at Juilliard. <laughs> you know, not everyone's that great at it. I know, but there, but there's not as many as 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 we would like, right? Um, but but that if that story's true, then you can do it. And then so I, I started practicing that, and I started honing my path before getting distracted from different things. I was calling pigeons down to me, like you know, three roofs away, yeah. staring at it, going, "Okay, if you land right here in the hood." I'm going to put food out and then it would land in the hood. And then I just freak out. I'd be like, Oh my God, Oh my God. And just like astral projecting when I tried to do that, the second you get excited, it's like, you got to even be cool when you're, you know, when you're doing this shit, you got to see, cool. these are the powers the second... I want or to, to call yeah. down birds from the sky to land in my hands. This, this now Poop on that man's head. You know? like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, some people can say, take it a, a step further. And I would agree that, you know, the, the, the vegetable world can respond to communication as well. You know, people have been claiming um, to have a communication with the, the plants, uh, the plant life that's around them, trees and plants. And, and that stuff sends out communication as well. It's almost like I just love this idea of a psychic net and uh, and, and, and an intention and and. You know, look, uh, for those of you out there listening, you know, heed these words like, you, you know, it's not going to be just flashlights and, and footsteps in the woods in, to get close to this stuff. You've got to sort of uh, you've got to think outside the box because there's a, there's a phenomenon at play. And if you don't think phenomenally, then, you know, you're not going to be playing. OK, we're running out of showtime here. So I want to bring it back to Skunk Ape momentarily, RPG. Sure. Yeah. What what is it about skunk ape and what where are you at with what the skunk ape phenomenon is? Because I don't know how familiar you are with the show, but mm -hmm. Bryce used to try to sell the concept of skunk ape uh, to our listeners on occasion. And uh, he was not always great <laughs> at it. We'll be honest. Like if you. Well, I only had 60 had seconds. 60 seconds. So, so Ryan RPG. Uh, let's set the clock here. Mike G, is there any way to pull up, bring up a counter on here? I'm putting RPG on the spot. I love just throwing, throwing oh, my there, balls here. Yeah, no way at all. Thanks, Michael. But okay, great. Uh, so I'll I can, I, great. We'll do this. We'll do this the old I got a we'll phone. do this the old-fashioned way. I'm gonna do exactly yeah. what I did. That's how we used to do it. Here's how we used to do it. All right. RPG, you have 60 seconds to sell. <laughs> the concept of skunk ape to someone who says i don't believe in skunk ape okay how okay. how how would you describe them and how would you how would you make them believe that skunk ape is real ready we'll really simply anytime okay, great. Here, give me a second oh. All he's right, already ready to go and sell skunk ape okay one of the major problems when people come up to you and say bigfoot's not real you know it can't be real they've done zero research at all it's just what they've heard Watch The Skunk Ape Lives, a documentary by Stacey Brown Jr. Watch it. That's it. Just watch it. And if you watch that, and, and it's all true in there, and at the end you go, nah, then you're part of the 80% that has no critical thinking left, and uh, and good luck with your life. Because you, have 30, you have 30 seconds left, so you can flush this that's out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now just cut to my own property. We moved to Florida, and my wife, who does not believe, she's just amused by me and, and thinks I have a fun hobby. Uh, she saw one on our property on July, the seventh month, July 7th at seconds. seven o'clock. What's that mean? She saw one over nine feet tall on the property Ten. and it spooked nine. the crap out of her. And you cannot lie Seven. when the eyes go Six. owl wide. Five. And you guys Four. know if you've done interviews Three. with people that have had real experiences, Two. mic drop, Four. that's it. Done. Great. That was 60 seconds. Let's get some comments up here. Has <laughs> RPG sold Skunk Ape? Let's get some feedback sold. here. Are you guys I, buying? I've got Riley, sold, how do you sold in 5.8 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear Riley sing more. You know, like, come on. Oh, man. No, this is great. I just, I love it. A lot of solds. Sold, oh, yeah. sold, sold. Oh, Absolutely wow, wow. sold. Yep, sold. Okay, they're great. Just, they're, Every they're Native American culture in our country has some kind of a name for them they're in their mm -hmm. stories so you want you want to know if you're a jerk or not like why wouldn't you believe that if they all have stories yep. all of mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. all right well Strong rpg way. where can people find your work where can people find the series mm -hmm. or the movie i guess part two yep. um yep. where yeah because i want to watch that where can people check all this stuff out 
uh, Skunk Ape Experiments Part Two. It, you know, when you, when you learn the filmmaking, we should have released all three in a row. We didn't know we're going to make more money. No, we're just going to confuse people. So right now, Skunk Ape One is on Amazon. You learn as you go. Yeah. <laughs> you really do, You're, and you just got to love the process. Skunk Ape Two will be on Amazon shortly. For those of you that want to sneak, it's on Les Stroud's channel right now, so you can check it out there. I'm not supposed to say that on YouTube. On YouTube. Okay. Love you guys. Uh, I also have one called Satanga, Bigfoot Spirits and Faith, which I loved when Jana was on. I actually go to the Macy Reservation uh, with my boy James Brost. And and uh, we the most phenomenal thing ever. That's another thing to get into. But I either saw the bottom of a mothership land or the most. Anyway, that's another oh. whole story. Um, and also the yep. Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference. I am the master of ceremonies for that. That's coming up July 22nd in Gatlinburg. If you have not been there, it is a... It's a Finding Bigfoot reunion plus Adam Davies, Tony Merkel. I mean, it's it's off the charts. So fantastic. Wow. Yep. Awesome. And to make sure to find that uh, Satonga Bigfoot, it's spelled C I T O N G A, Bigfoot Spirits and Faith. It's on Amazon. Get that spelling right and you will find it right Great. away. Great. I love it. Well, RPG. Uh, okay. We got a comment from Jimmy with the boat again. Dude, I literally just upgraded me my Patreon to Cosmeteer after Riley's performance. Sorry it took so long. Great. Thank yeah, you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Right That's on. fantastic. Yeah. Everyone get on that Cosmeteer uh, uh, membership. Uh, all right. RPG stay there. Let's bring Jana back in. We, we, uh, as always, we've run a little long here, but we're going to take some time for some questions while we're gearing up for that. Can we get any more comments? Riley, do you have any more comments about, uh, okay, here we go. Wait, before we get to questions, any more comments that we can respond to? I feel like we kind of let these comments just I mean, club down. The, the amount of, of sold on skunk cake, ape was overwhelming um although jana uh, are you buying skunk ape yeah are you on board <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah also just re- this i'm just, a believer baby this just popped into my head from the comments earlier but uh the the fuck you bucket is uh, very popular amongst the uh comments from way earlier in the show <laughs> we're gonna have are, to figure out how it's to filling up that sell request, a fuck you bucket for they're requesting merch them. actually yeah, yeah there were several yeah, yeah, yeah. requests Yeah, a lot of scientists in that <laughs> bucket yeah <laughs> all right well we're never planned let's that. Exactly. let's get yeah. some q and a's up here and this can be for us it can be if it's for us we're going to expand it to jana and rpg as well so it's our big hairy Q and A. Let's do it. We got a couple minutes left. What do we got? Looking for some questions. BCC boys and uh, Jana and RPG. Would you rather wake up one day as a completely different person just to find that your whole life was someone else's VR experience, or or what, or that, or what, or wake up one day to your ten year old self and have to relive the same life? with the full knowledge of what happened. Oh, this is interesting. Let's, this is a question yeah, for yeah, everybody. Good. I mean, wait, do I wake up as the person that had the VR experience yes. of my life? Because then yes. definitely that I get to, I get to dimension hop. That's amazing. Okay. I mean, hopefully they are having a good life. Well, I guess if they're living my life in VR, maybe they're not. So I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Bryce, what do you think, Jana? You're humming, humming and humming over there. I, I, I've kind of I've had the thought a lot lately of like, what if I could go back with the knowledge I have now? But I've just I've realized that like so many things had to happen on accident and happen because I didn't know shit. Like yeah. there's no way like my whole life would be different in a way that I think I wouldn't want. Like I'm like, oh, man, if I, I'd have to get like my dogs back and I'd have to be. I'd have to build certain relationships and be at certain apartments at certain, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't want to not have my dogs again. Like I, you know, unless you are just sitting as an unwitting passenger and I wouldn't want that either. So I guess to mention hop with Riley is where I'm going with this. I'm going to say the same. I I don't really want to go back in time to when I was, I don't want to relive this. No, (laughs) it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. RPG. I'll join that club too. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a Black Mirror episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> would I have total recall? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I I think obviously it would be awesome uh, to go back as ten with all this knowledge that we had, as long as it was guaranteed that I would have my love and I would have my little babies. Then yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's tough. Yeah. I think if you go back and you have knowledge, you're gonna just fork off into a completely different timeline forge a different river yeah, yeah. so i don't want to do that you know what i mean scared a cat 
Uh, all right, here we go. Any update on season four of Expedition Bigfoot? Also, would you guys do a deep dive into doppelgangers? Genuinely mm-hmm. freaks me out while being completely fascinated. Uh, yeah, we w- we will air this year. So uh, not sure when we have that that air date, as you guys know. A uh, big, uh, big change up over on Warner and Discovery and now Max. But you know what? Here's the thing. You can find seasons one through three on your Max app, uh, which was old HBO and old Discovery. So uh, catch up on episodes there. And season four, Alaska, will be coming out this year. Uh, and I'll let you know as soon as that. And yes, doppelgangers. Man, I've seen mine. It's scary. What? When did you see your? Somebody showed me. (laughs) Somebody showed me a picture. They're like, I think I found your doppelganger. It was eerily close to 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 what I look like. They, I forget what they. It's uh, just looking to do a high. a photo of Brad Pitt. (laughs) That's what I was thinking too. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Okay. This is amazing. Oh my god. We do need to do an episode on that because there is some science that everybody does have. A double somehow, somewhere. Remember that I article what that, that we should came out like a year ago, where they had all those people posing with their doppelgangers and like Calvin Klein style ba- black and white uh, uh, photos. Did you guys see that article? It was no, weird. see that. It was pretty weird. Mm. Uh, do we have any questions for Jana and RPG uh, while they're here? Come on, let's get some Jana and RPG questions up there. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, Nian Nia NCA. Could we? Oh, could we get Bryce in a purple dress? And Michael in a blue one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah. The challenge done is and set. done. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll say this. You, These are... I'll tease a little something. I will be wearing a dress and something coming out sometime in the future. So you will be, you will Mysterious. get at least your, I don't, I can't, I don't know if there's a blue one, but, uh, um, I would, okay. Hey, can I say this? Uh, one of the greatest thing any guy can do on Halloween is dress as a woman to experience what it's like mm-hmm. in a sense to be a woman because let me tell you, it's a ride. Men are very respectful compared to women. That is all I'll say. I've never been <laughs> broke so much in my life. And they just come up and grab you and go, you look great. And just keep walking. And you're like complimented and like accosted at the same time. It's it's amazing. Gina, yeah. as the only woman in this chat, would you like to comment on this? Uh, yeah, that's called assault. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a day part of our daily lives as women. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> John E.L. Tenney, all of you, if you had to have one of the following psychic powers, telepathy, telekinesis, or mediumship, oh. which would you pick? Ooh, telekinesis, 100%. Because you can fly, like, if I have, like, uh, Gene yeah. Gray powers, I can make myself fly, I can move things around, telekinesis, baby. Yeah, I would do that, too. I used to practice in my basement. I would turn a, my tricycle over and try and get one of the wheels to turn. And and, and, and I I think I got it a little bit, but uh, never was able to form fully formulate my powers of telekinesis. So I'll take that as well. I think I'd go telepathy. Because oh, I think I would I too. Mean, mm. Like it's really cool to manipulate the physical world, but the ability to just like project into people's minds, like you could get a lot done. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, RPG ever? Oh, sorry, RPG. You got it. Did you answer that question? Yeah, I have not. I, I would love to. Oh, have you Hit ever you gone through regression? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I have not. The only thing, once again, like got to destroy that whole foundation of, of facts that you're given. The only thing I remember is anyone telling me was that if I did something like that, I would I would open up uh, essentially a portal and just destroy my life. That that's what somebody said to me. Mm. Now, whether that's true or not, mm. that's the blocker that mm. I have to like move beyond. So I've never done anything like that yet. All right. I think this will be our final question for the night. This is for everybody. What do you guys think is the most underrated cryptid? It has so much evidence to prove its authenticity, but it's not very well known. So Mm. like something that we might know about as fans of this stuff, but nobody else really knows about. Hmm. Um, That's a really good one because I, I would say like, See, I don't know if I would put this encrypted, but something like the Flatwoods monster, that Braxton County monster story about that crash UFO. I mean, that's a one off. So I don't know if that but that's one of my favorite stories that I feel like 
you hear that story from those eyewitnesses who like did not want anything to do with that situation. That would be a good one. Maybe yeah. dog, maybe dog man might be it for me as well, because I was a skeptic. And then I started hearing all this stuff that Linda S. Godfrey was writing about. And I was like, Oh shit, this might actually be a phenomenon. I really do love those cave goblins or those dirty D rows as Richard Shaver <laughs> called them. So uh, I think there's a whole lot of meat on those bones that people would really enjoy if they, uh, if they learned about these strange goblins that seem to not only be attached to the UFO phenomenon, but uh, to the to the Lambrinthian cave system uh, here in the United States as well. Something going on there. All right. I mean, skunk ape also, right? Like we that's if people it's, uh, immediately scoffed off because it just sounds silly. And then uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, hearing hearing you talk about everything RPG is like I think that's a. Uh, that's that's a very underrated cryptid that we need to get to the masses. Documented evidence, literally documented. Police. Jana, what do you think? Um, who are the aliens that look like blonde Nordic people? The Nordics. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's gotta be the one <laughs> right. for me. There's, I think Riley might be one. I don't know. Like, there's so many. Not people. the first person to accuse him of that. <laughs> <laughs> Neither confirm nor deny. RPG. There's a lot of evidence that they exist. Is your skunk uh, ape? Uh, well, I'm going to twist it a little bit. I think uh, one of the things that everyone's experiencing, whether you're in a haunted house or you're in the woods looking for skunk apes, um, are Foo Fighters. And mm. you, want a, you, you want a good deep dive? You want a mind blown? Uh, a book called Quantum Paranormal by Patrick Jackson. Going back to trusting your gut, the second, I, the second I heard this guy talk, blew my mind. Anyway, the Foo Fighters... You were talking about the aliens earlier in Vegas, and uh, you want to know my opinion? Holograms. Yes. Holograms. Holograms. Oh, yeah. Drone, mm. effortless uh, drone, because if you hit mm. the right people with it, they can already do it. Go to Dubai and travel over there and okay. see the magnificent shows they're doing in broad daylight where you're like, oh, my God. Now, imagine being unexpected and having that happen. Anyway, I think that happens in haunted Some houses. Black ops stuff, in the too. Woods. Yep. And anyway, that's, that's my two cents. Quantum okay. paranormal. Uh, blow your mind. Blowing great wow. all blow right it, well down. we have run out wow. of show cool. uh sorry if we didn't get to your question um we appreciate everybody being here Jana, rpg thank you so much for being on the show tonight you guys are incredible and so game and so lovely thanks for being here we appreciate it thank you bye all right everybody oh, nice. well that's it that's it what Woo. another fun clubhouse live stream these things go by so fast uh i just want to remember oh, wow yeah i want to remind everybody you can uh pre-order your t-shirts your big hairy summer t-shirts right now over at store.bigfootcollectorsclub.com these are very limited edition by the way i'm just gonna say that not a huge print run on these so if you want one i would go ahead and grab one of those uh kimberly don't forget to email uh popsy lounge contact us we'll get you your free t-shirt um, if you love BCC for just five bucks a month, you can unlock three more exclusive episodes every month over at BCC, the other side. And you know what? I used to say that it's, it's as much as a cup of coffee. I now go to a place for like my latte. <laughs> I, I can only go like once a week now because it's like seven dollars now. Yeah, this is less than a latte. Today. Yeah, this is now less. Guys, just think it's less than a latte for so, the price of a Snickers bar. Yeah, you you will you can unlock three more exclusive episodes every month uh plus what else bryce uh they can also get uh and i know i'm going off the script here but uh riley's cosmeteer uh, uh for only uh, for only nine dollars a month you get what three bonus tracks of of, of yeah, riley's incredible soundtracks. music yeah. uh we're seeing more and more cosmeteers every day as as that lovely person commented sorry i forgot your name they already jumped on after it was, it was jimmy yeah. with the yeah. boat yeah. Jimmy with the boat, man. That's just a small sampling of what Riley does. And uh, yeah, yeah join and the those Cosmo are, tier level. Some of that well. stuff's original music, and some a lot of that stuff is archive soundtracks from the show itself. So uh, yes. and they make oh, and there's also the, uh, the Discord. The Discord. Mm -hmm. So there you, you right? join our Patreon, you get access to that great uh, The Other Side community. And, and it is an incredible community. One of the things we're most proud of here is is – is the people that we communicate with and each other. So you guys, uh, yeah, you guys, yeah. man, you guys make it all happen. So yep. 
um, get I'm to know each other. At, at how the Discord's taken off. It's so cool over there. I, I love just scrolling through it and just what, reading everybody's conversations and chiming in here and there. It's, oh, it's, it's awesome. The best. Yeah, and also, it? on the other side, too, I just want to mention, you will have access to the past four years of episode backlogs, too. So it's not like you're just getting access to the to those episodes. So anyway, there you go. Uh, all right. Well, uh, it's all waiting for you over at patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. Don't forget, we are coming to Austin very soon. Two weeks, uh, July 7th through 9th for RTX Festival. We'll be doing a live in-person show on Sunday, July 9th at 10 a.m. at the Convention Center. So get your tickets at rtxaustin.com. Uh, once again, I want to give a big thanks to Jen Kirkman, Janice Schmeeting, RPG, and Tommy. Also, huge thanks to Ryan Munoz, Mike G, and the Popsy Lounge team for having us, and Ryan Middledorf and Wood Elf for hosting PCC on their network every week. And, of course, thanks to you, you, the club scouts of all timelines. Thank you for coming tonight. We love you guys so much. Where there's love, there's kisses. Uh, we'll see some of you in the VIP session in just a few minutes. Uh, if we don't see you there, we'll see you next Wednesday for an all new episode of BCC. So until then, good night and go get regressed. Whoa, you're.